will be discussing about occupational health issues, industrial accident, toxic and other chemical waste and vector control as the syllabus given by sir. So uh, to start with, uh, we will be discussing in this session what is occupational health, what is occupational health hazards, what are different aspects of occupational health, what are different occupational disease, occupational safety, industrial accident and so on. So to start with, if we talk about occupational health, occupational health, it deals with physical and mental, all aspect of physical and mental well-being in the workplace. We know that whenever we are uh, in some occupation, we are exposed to certain kind of stress, certain kind of harm, certain kind of diseases or, uh, or it affects our physical and mental well-being. So anything which causes risk or hazard to an employee, whether it is physical or whether it is mental, is an occupational health issue. So occupational health hazard, if you see, it is uh, occupational health hazard, if you see, it is uh, a hazard experience as a tool in the workplace. It can be chemical hazard, physical hazard, biological hazard, psychosocial hazards, uh, etc. And on the basis of this, occupational diseases are also classified into various type of diseases, whether it is physical, ergonomic, uh, physiological agents, accident, etc. So to start my presentation, I will start with Is it visible? Is yes, PPT yes, visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, when we talk about occupational health, occupational health is the branch of healthcare which deals with all aspects of health and safety of workplace. There are different kind of occupation, everybody, and uh, in different type of occupation, we are exposed to different type of hazards. Uh, generally, whenever we talk about occupation, health or occupation disease, uh, many things comes into our mind, whether it is industry, the persons working in different industry, whether it is pesticide industry or it is textile industry, cement industry, the workers which are or the people who are working in different sectors, the people who are working in agriculture sector, people working on construction site, farmers, engineers, and so on and so forth. They are exposed to different kind of hazard. So occupational health is a branch of healthcare which deals with all aspect of health and safety at the workplace. At the workplace, we are exposed to various type of physical hazard, whether it is noise, whether it is heat, whether it is cold, whether it is radiation. And then there are different type of chemical hazard, whether it is in the form of acid, base, metal, different type of organic dust, whether it is uh, silica, asbestos and uh, uh, various uh, health sector also nowadays because, uh, because of Corona, we know that the, or otherwise also there are different type of biomedical uh, hazards. So we are exposed to different type of uh, uh, hazard. So if we define occupational hazard, occupational health is defined as promotion and maintenance of the highest level of physical, mental and social well-being of workers in all occupations by preventing the departures from health controlling risk and adapting of work to people and people to their jobs. This definition was given by International Labour Organization and WHO in 1950. So it covers or it gives emphasis on the prevention of hazard at primary level. As I was saying, that there are different type of hazard. It may be because of chemical agent, it may be because of physical agent, biological agent, ergonomic factor or psychosocial factor. As a chemical agent, we know that there are different type of gases, vapors, different type of solid, fibers, liquid, dust, mist, fumes, etc. Physical agent, noise, vibration, heat, cold, electromagnetic field, lighting, 
etc. There are many biological agent. It can be bacteria, fungi, virus, or other type of uh, biological agents. Ergonomic factor, as it's uh, because of their uh, your uh, working condition, they may be lifting, stretching, or uh, other type of repeated motion. And psycholo psychosocial hazard, as we know, it is a result of various type of stress, workload, work organization. It it uh, it talks about your mental health, like there are depression or many other kind of psychosocial factor. So we will be discussing all these type one by one. And the occupational hazard, as I told, it is physical hazard, chemical hazard, biological hazard, or psychosocial, or psychological, or behavior change. Uh, physical first, we'll discuss about physical hazard: heat, cold, night, different, uh, uh, different radiation, noise, vibration. These all comes under physical hazard. Heat, whether it is direct light or whether indirect effect of high temperature, radiant heat, or heat radiation. Cold, the people working in uh, cold condition, whether it is working their cold chain, they are working in cold storage or other cold condition, they have general or local cold injury. There is light uh, hazard, which may be acute or chronic effect of bright and dim light. Basically, it may be uh, the worker who are working in mines, coal mines or other mines, their uh, eyes get affected by different uh, dim light, bright light or certain other kind of light or various type of uh, workers who are working in different condition. Then there are radiations. They may be ionizing radiation. There may be non-ionizing radiation. As we know that ionizing radiation, it may be X-ray, gamma ray, beta particle, alpha particle, etc. Or non-ionizing radiation may be microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet lights, etc. Then there is noise. Uh, the level of noise, the worker who are working in factory, there are different type of machines. There are dip, drilling machine, etc. Which has also vibration also. So it may cause hazard in frequency range of 10 to 15, 500 hertz. Simply the giving you example of physical hazard. First is heat. That is hyperthermia because of high temperature. The, there may be heat stroke. There may be heat exhaustion. There may be heat sanocop. The people can be faint because of high heat. There can be heat cramps. There can be burns. So these are, are the uh, facts. The person who are the person who are at risk because of this physical hazard, there may there are agriculture worker, there are nursery worker, dairy worker, firefighter, carpenter, engineer, factory worker, etc. These electricians, electrical engineering, they all are uh, at high risk of this physical. Uh, type of physical hazard. Then there are cold hazard. These are the cold hazards you might have observed that people who are uh, in a uh, cold condition for a very long period of time, their feet become uh, feet. Uh, this is all because of a very cold condition, unsanitary condition, and their exposure to the field or uh, to a very cold condition for a longer period of time. Then there are pressure. The people who are working in uh, kind of uh, different type of uh, high pressure or low pressure condition. So that also called different type of physical injury. Then there are noise injury. The person who are working at uh, high noise, uh, they may be having occupational deafness. Then radiation. As I told the radiation, x-ray, gamma rays. The people who are working in different type of manufacturing, factories, researchers, scientists, nuclear power industry nuclear engineer physician and all health worker who are working with this uh, x-ray machine or other type of uh, radiation they are at risk then there are me mechanical factors the, uh, the people who are having they, they are exposed to mechanical hazard the people who are working with the heavy machineries and uh, agriculture worker business establishment industries construction worker they are all exposed to this kind of mechanical hazard then vibrations as i was telling drilling machine etc they have this vibration hazard biological hazard we know that biological agents of that hazard is virus fungi bacteria different type of parasites insects birds animal or any other biological agent which are causing hazard is biological hazard Different type of biological agent, we know that hepatitis B, hepatitis C, tuberculosis, uh, there is AIDS, anthrax, tetanus, and nowadays different type of uh, the SARS-CoV virus also is one of the occupational hazard. You might have heard that many of the doctors 
or many of the uh, health worker they are exposed uh, to these biological agent and many are infected many have lost their life this is also part of occupational hazard and biological agent and like we know that in china also the doctor who has treated many uh, this corona patient initially and in india also many of the health worker because of this biological agent many uh, people have uh, gone i mean lost their life then there are chemical hazard the people working in different type of industry they are exposed to different type of chemical chemical vapors acid base heavy metal there are different type of solvents there are different type of particulates whether it is asbestos silica uh, iron or other type of fiber, uh, fibrous material different type of fumes highly reactive materials they are all uh, exposed to chemical hazard we we uh, as a student also or as a person working in different type of laboratories or different science experiment or there are different firefighters there are different industries the people this kind of exposure is also uh, very uh, prevalent or very this kind of hazard is also very prevalent we know that these chemical agents cause different type of diseases there are different gases the people are working they have gas poisoning then there are inorganic dust like people working in coal mining there are coal dust which cause anthracosis there are silica which cause silicosis silica we all know this is the oldest occupational disease and the people who uh, inhale the silica dust for a longer period of time then there is asbestos which cause asbestosis then iron which called dis siderosis so these all are there are number of chemical agents number of uh, uh, chemicals which cause different type of occupational hazard uh then uh, psychosocial hazard is as i was telling you that work related stress there are excessive work timing overwork or during this time uh, there is also uh, the kind of exposure the stress because of this online uh, meetings or online work online uh, staying at home this also cause different type of pressure then violence there are certain cases many cases of violence from outside the organization then bullying sexual harassment exposure to unhealthy elements so all these are psychosocial hazard the psychological agents uh, or psychological hazard which result from stress and strains these are depression discouragement anxiety memory loss dissatisfaction frustration irritability discouragement and so on and so forth there are many the, uh, the the few of the hazard which result from stress and strain we all know about that so i was telling about the public health or occupational health the goal of the occupational health we know that the different type of occupational hazards whether it is physical hazard chemical hazard biological hazard psychological hazard psychosocial or behavioral hazard all these hazards are uh, occurring at the due to different occupations so the occupational health is uh, designed the goal of occupational health is to reduce different type of industrial accident to prevent the occupational hazards or occupational diseases which is occurring because of this to achieve maximum human efficiency and machinery efficiency and to reduce the sick absenteeism so coming to the objective of occupational health the objective of main objective if you say Uh, of occupational health is to maintain and promote the physical mental and social well being of workers uh, protect them from various uh, type of physical hazard various type of mental hazard various type of social hazard and prevent them from different occupational diseases and injury we know about occupational pulmonary disease we know about occupational asthma we know about many diseases so the uh, sil like uh, silicosis asbestos cirrhosis and so many so prevent them from these occupational diseases and injuries to adapt the workplace and work environment to the needs of the worker and application of ergonomics principle and it should be preventive rather than curative
like uh, uh, ergo, if I talk about ergonomics, uh, we know that there are many occupations where a person has to have various physical uh, related work like carrying very heavy load, working on a machinery in a condition when, when, when you are not in a position or where you are exposed to different type of physical stress. So these all the basic condition to provide the worker good light condition, good sanitation, good physical state of the uh, that uh, particular environment is also objective of occupational health. Like a simple example, uh, whenever we considered about occupation, many occupation comes into our mind. There are we we are reading in many newspaper that uh, there are these uh, the person who are working with the waste, they the sewage plants. They are working in a condition. They are uh, uh, cleaning the sewers for a long time, staying there in a longer period of time in very unhygienic condition. That is one thing, and that. They are sometimes there are many deaths are reported because in that there are gases are released and people can people are dying like that uh, the people who are rag pickers or other person many uh, many um, occupations are in a way that they are not they are very much in danger of having different type of hazard different type of diseases so the purpose of this occupational health is to promote the physical mental and social well-being of the worker we we know that different type of occupational diseases and injuries to list few there are lung disease pulmonary diseases musculoskeletal diseases the diseases which are happening to to, to in different our muscles different um, skeletal cancers several type of cancer whether it is neurological skin or almost um, every part of our body is exposed to different type of chemicals different type of uh, toxic compound and different type of cancer are occurring severe trauma cardiovascular disorder disorder or reproduction neurotoxic disorder, noise related hearing loss, dermatological condition, psychological strain and boredom. These are few of the list of the occupational diseases and injuries. There are number of etiological factors or disease causing factor. It may be ergonomics related. It can be exposure to different type of chemicals like dust, gases, acid, alkali, metal. It may be because of various type of physical occupational factor like noise, heat, radiation as we know, biological occupational factor, it may be behavior occupational factor like there may be much work stress, there may be violence, there may be sexual harassment or there may be more workload, more work timing etc and social occupational factors. If we are, uh, if it, uh, if I talk about the major occupational disease or morbidity in India, which are of major concern, I'll say that these are few are silicosis, the person we, who are working in different mines, coal mines, or musculoskeletal injuries, the agriculture workers who are carrying the higher weight, or the uh, uh, person who are working with the uh, carrying of various machineries or uh, working with the machinery then there are coal worker who are having this pneumoconosis this pneumonia or lung problem chronic obstructive lung disease asbestosis biocinosis pesticide poisoning noise induced hearing loss and mental disorder so these are few of the diseases or occupational diseases prevalent in india to maintain the occupational health, the occupational hygiene is required. So what is occupational hygiene? The International Occupational Hygiene Association, which is known as IOHA, it defines occupational hygiene as the discipline of anticipating, recognizing, evaluating and controlling health hazard in the working environment with the objective of protecting workers' health and well-being and safeguard the community at large. When we talk about occupational hazard, the risk identification or risk assessment also is a very important component. So identification of risk or analyzing the risk, that is also a very important component. So how we 
anticipate and recognize the occupational hazard there are some uh, few of the steps like anticipation recognition evaluation and control these are the steps for the controlling occupational or analyzing the occupational hazard anticipation as the name indicate that it involves identification of the potential hazard in the workplace before they are introduced then once we are anticipated the 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 recognition uh, few of the hazards can be anticipated but few of the hazard uh, need to be recognized this involve identification of potential hazard that has chemical physical or biological agent or also adverse ergonomic situation which poses to health then evaluation evaluation is the evaluating the extent of exposure to the chemical hazard physical hazard or biological hazard or adverse ergonomic situation in the workplace so this this involves the measurement of the personal exposure of the worker to the hazard agent in the workplace whether it is interface between the environment and the body whether it is uh, the assessment of the data in terms of recommended occupational exposure limit there are number of uh, uh, cases where we you know when when we talk about the heat when we talk about the light when we talk about the radiation when we talk about the vibration there are recommended exposure limits so there is need to follow those exposure limits then control once we are evaluating once we are identifying uh, all kind of occupational hazard then we need to control them whether it is controlling of chemical hazard whether it is controlling of physical hazard biological agent or any adverse ergonomic situation there is need to control so these are the four steps what in this graph i just try to show you that what is occupational hygiene so in uh, work activity we are exposed to various type of hazard as we have discussed physical chemical biological or whatever hazard ergonomic hazard we are exposed and the disease are occurring the occupational health is to prevent the goal and objective of occupational health is to prevent the diseases by modifying the exposure so here comes the role of occupational hygiene and also when if the disease has been occurred or if the injury is occurred the role of occupational medicine how it can be rectified how it can be cured or how it can be prevented so occupational health occupational hygiene uh, uh, occupational medicine these all are part of occupational health hazard hygiene and occupational health now coming to industrial accident as in your syllabus the one of the topic which i have been given is industrial accident the occupational hazard when we talk about the hazard can be in any of the workplace it can be in uh, as it can be in anywhere in factories in roads in uh, like agriculture field but here we are mainly concerned about industrial accident we all have heard about so many industrial accident whenever we i talk about industrial accident the first and foremost which comes in my mind is always abupa always bhopal gas tragedy but after that also and before that also many accident has occurred recently you might have read in the newspaper about this uh, vijaj gas release or this um, ajad mandi fire accident or there is one accident in npa where there is uh, gas has been released so uh, if you see the number of death or number of uh, uh, diseases accident exposure occur occurring uh, or, or because of this industrial accident is many if you go any newspaper you will find that the work related hazards or industrial accident is very prevalent so industrial accidents we we know that or is are being caused by various chemical mechanical civil electrical or other process failure due to accident negligence or incompetence in an industrial plant 
which may spill over to the areas outside the plant causing damage to life and property like uh, we know in uh, there is release of chemical then we know that there is sometimes such accident occur because of negligence or because of certain thing that uh, there is mechanical injuries certain people uh, like we know that uh, certain part body part get injured or sometimes there are uh, negligence in the part of electrical appliance so that there is a uh, fire is there or sometimes there is negligence uh, release of certain or electricity electrocution is also very prevalent or sometimes because of release of these chemical there is damage to different ecosystem whether it's plant water or other properties so industrial accident if we talk about it is manufacturing and formulation installations including during commissioning and process operation maintenance and disposal any time this accident can occur or it can occur during material handling and storage in manufacturing facilities like if there are certain chemicals they are uh, in such a stored condition like uh, uh, one example which I have given in this also that storage of radioactive compound certain time the or uh, the storage of certain or handling of certain assets uh, handling of certain compound which needs uh, to take care they are not properly stored not properly disposed of so it can cause various type of uh, diseases or accident then transportation whether it is transportation during road rail air water or pipeline so the accident if we say industrial accident it can be because of uh, operating machinery it can be general industrial accident it can be many accident occurs in uh, during mm -hmm. diwali especially in fire factories in crackers matchbox manufacturing it can be fire in mine it can be industrial boiler cylindrical explosion mining disaster or fires or other type of factories so there is a convention on the transboundary effect of industrial accident preamble so in this article 1 it defines it gives definition for the purpose of this convention it talks about industrial accident it talks about industrial accident which means an event resulting from an uncontrolled development in the course of any activity which involved hazardous substance either during installation or use or storage or handling or disposal and second one is during transportation in so far as it covers by paragraph c or d article 2 then there are hazardous activity the mainly hazardous activities means any activity which one or more hazardous substances are present or may be present in quantity or in excess of the threshold quantity are listed in the annexation. Then effect. Effect can be direct or indirect. It can be immediate or delayed or adverse consequence, consequences caused by industrial accident or inter -area. It can affect the human being. It can affect flora, fauna, soil, water, air, landscape or intersection between the factories uh, or uh, human being one and two, the human being, flora and fauna, soil, water, area, land base and material assets and cultural heritage. So if we talk about transboundary, transboundary, you might have heard about the transboundary pollution, transboundary. So transboundary effect means serious effect within the jurisdiction of a party as a result of an industrial accident during within the jurisdiction of another party. So these are the convention was there for transboundary effect of industrial accident. Talking about industrial hazards. So industrial hazards can occur in any stage in the production process which include extraction, processing, manufacture, transportation, storage, use and disposal. It losses generally involve the release of damaging substance whether it is chemical substance, whether it is radioactive substance, whether it is genetic material or damaging level of energy from industrial facility or equipment into surrounding environment. These are usually occurs in the form of explosion or in the form of fire or in the form of spills, leaks or waste. The major threat as uh, we know uh, about uh, the industrial accident or incident, industrial incidents are fire. There are many like I was saying 
Ajad Mundi Fire or Fire in Vinny, uh, Polystyrene Company. The, there are a number of incidents, then explosion, then toxic release, poisoning or combination of all these uh, type of threats. If you talk about the compounding effects of accident, there are a number of factors which increase or compound the effect of accident. Like there is meteorology of the area, wind speed, direction and rate of precipitation. Suppose there is a release of certain kind of uh, toxic gases. The toxic gases, how far they are reaching, how fast they are reaching, uh, the people, it all depends upon the wind speed, the meteorological data, how these are affecting to their soil or water, if there is precipitation. So, all these uh, meteorological uh, phenomena of the air are responsible for the compounding effect of accident. Then the toxicity and quantity of the chemical which is being released, what is the amount, whether it is uh, in large amount or less amount, then population in the reach of the release, suppose there is a radioactive plant and usually in nuclear power plant or nuclear uh, radioactive plant, the population is uh, usually not very close. But suppose it is very close, the population, it will very easily, it will reach the population. If the water body is getting contaminated or that water body is, being, uh, is a source of water to various type of uh, animals or human beings so it it uh, cause compounding effect then there are certain uh, cases there is probability that the the there is a probability of uh, the compound or the release uh, combining with certain other compound and making a very lethal mixture the mixture which is more dangerous than the original one and other industrial activity in the vicinity so this is a simple pictorial presentation of the industrial uh, accident, the industrial release or industrial discharge of any type of uh, hazard. It will affect living organism, it will affect environment and it will affect property. When we talk about the living organism, it, it, uh, it includes humans, it includes livestock, other animals and plants. So depending upon the type of uh, hazard it may cause death it may cause different injury diseases and different type of disability to living organism when we talk about environment and property there may be immediate effect short term effect and long term effect depending upon the type of hazard environment it will affect the soil it will affect the water body it will affect the atmosphere which is a result again if it is causing water pollution or if it is causing soil pollution or if it is causing air pollution, then again, the effect will be the two living being, the people who are consuming that uh, compound, that uh, water or uh, breathing that air or they are uh, in the uh, their agriculture field. Like uh, in past also, we have uh, heard about many type of uh, industrial accident, whether it is minimata bay disease, whether it is uh, a tie tie problem or whether it is different type of uh, mercury pollution or any other type of pollution the ultimately if it is affecting the soil water body or atmosphere definite, definitely it will affect the human being beside the crop so we know about the major consequences of all these type of accident as i was telling loss of life and injury it will affect the livestock it will damage the flora and fauna it the the chemical compound may accumulate or uh, in that uh, soil, in the water, in human being, in fishes also. And then it can, through fishes, it can again uh, be, uh, goes to human being. We, we know about the bioaccumulation, we know about biomagnification, we know how this mercury from the Minamata Bay disease was found in uh, the human body because of the consumption of the fishes which have the accumulated mercury and then this biomagnification etc it will affect the environment and then uh, one more thing is that it is financial loss to industry so few of the accident like i was mentioning uh, whenever we talk about industrial accident, the first thing, there are many, the first thing which comes into my mind or which I think is very important and still we have not taken any lesson 
from that is Bhopal guest tragedy which occurred in the third night of third, second third December, and which happened due to Union Carbide India Limited UCIL, which is a pesticide plant in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh, and over five lakh people were exposed to methyl isocyanide gas and other chemical. The death toll, if you see the official uh, immediate death toll was 2,259 and uh, confirm MP government later on confirmed the death of 3,787 death which is related to gas release. In 2006, the government affidavit stated the leak caused uh, uh, almost it it caused a number I don't want to you can see the number but it caused uh, many death many people were uh, having injuries many people were having disabilities and the people many people get affected because of still the people are having that after effect of Bhopal gas tragedy this is this is one picture which is haunted till now in everybody's minds because it is one of the worst industrial disaster in history and uh, there are uh, people who are still suffering from cancer tuberculosis partial or incomplete blindness post-traumatic stress disorder or menstrual irregularity and there are still rising in spontaneous that time spontaneous abortion and stillbirth was very uh, prevalent and still it is occurring as of nine uh, can you imagine after almost uh, more than 30 years it is still uh, 20 or 25 years 26 years to be precise it is still occurring there are there were long term effect and short term effect long term if short term effect was resulted into that the long term effect are effect to their eyes respiratory tract effect to the neurological system and psychosocial or psychological problem there were there is chronic conjunctivitis scars spot on cornea corneal epicytes early cataract and even blindness because of this methyl isocyanide release from the union carbide and there are number of respiratory tract problem whether it is obstructive or respirate, restricted disease pulmonary fibrosis aggravation of tuberculosis or chronic bronchitis there are several neurological system get defect, uh, affected whether it is impairment of memory finer motor skill numbness etc and psychological stress were many whether it is PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, children's health, peri and neonatal death rates were increased and there were many uh, people, uh, they were stunted, failed to grow, there is intellectual impairment, etc. The second incident or second industrial incident which I would like to uh, share with you is that IOC Jaipur which occurred in 2009. IOC is there is an Indian oil corporation there is Indian oil corporation oil depot there was uh, in Jaipur there is a uh, fire broke out on 29th of October 2009 at 7 30 p.m and uh, in, in this Indian oil corporation depot there was a giant tank which was holding around 8000 kiloliter of oil in Sitapur industrial area which is an outskirt of Jaipur and because of this fire it killed 12 people were injured 10 people were killed and, and more than 2000 were 200 were injured if you see the kind of fire which occurred it took a week or more than a week to control it and because of that the fire is one thing the kind of fumes which has released the time and effort which has been taken to evacuate the people to make the people comfortable to take the people to safer place and it was a major disaster in terms of deaths injury loss of business property mandates displacement of people and environmental impact to jaipur there were many incidents but i am just talking about few I wanted to include that visas also but uh, you you can read that also in newspaper then excuse me sorry my charger of laptop i need to charge it
then there is mayapuri radiological incident the people who are residing in delhi they might be or you might have uh, read in the newspaper also that uh, in um, delhi there is a mayapuri area which is basically a site where uh, people uh, most of the people dispose of their uh, based or uh, there was a uh, incident that the, there was explosion then people thought uh, initially people thought there is some terrorist attack or some other thing but it was found that there was a serious radiological accident in delhi university and acl gamma cell 220 research indicator was which was there in Delhi University Chemical uh, Science Lab in, from 1966 68 but it was unused and then it was sold to an auction to a scrap metal dealer in Mayapuri on February 26 2010 without thinking the or you can say sheer negligence on the part of the university this radioactive material they sold to a scrap metal dealer so the is the a uh, one orphan source they arrived at the scapier and uh, he tried to dismantle it without uh, uh, realizing the hazardous nature of the device so the cobalt because they they usually dismantle so this uh, gamma cell they dismantle it and the cobalt source which was the main radioactive source it was cut into 11 pieces and they have taken to different uh, areas the smallest piece was taken by a person named ajay jain he kept it in his wallet and uh, some he has given to nearby shop or some were in scrapyard later it was found that these radioactive material was uh, when they cause uh, different type of hazards to different people then the uh, what you say that uh, it was uh, there was some kind of uh, uh, investigation was done and it was found by the atomic energy department narura atomic energy station that what is the cause of uh, the injury and it was a kind of industrial accident during because of this eight people were hospitalized as a result of radiation exposure and when later one was died five patients suffer from hematological form of acute radiation syndrome and local cutaneous radiation as uh, injury as well the people were exposed to a radioactive dose which they survived after a certain time they, they have to be in intensive care unit and they have respiratory distress syndrome multi-organ failure etc so this incident uh, it has highlighted the current gaps in the knowledge infrastructure and legislation in handling radioactive waste so these were the example of few of the uh, industrial accidents now coming to the hazardous agents like we have already discussed there are uh, biological agent physical agent and chemical the chemical agents, they may be irritant, they may be corrosive, they may be physical agents we have discussed, but uh, chemical agents, they may be irritant, corrosive, sensitizers, target organ chemical, reproductive hazards and carcinogens. Irritant which cause irritation to skin and whenever they are come in contact or touch. Corrosive, we know that they destroy skin tissues at point of contact. They are sensitizer which cause allergy reaction. They are certain target organ chemical which damage specific body organ and system. Then there are reproductive hazards which cause changes in genetic material. And these are, uh, um, I mean like these can damage fetus after conception also or cells also. And there are carcinogens which can cause cancers. According to EPA, if you see there are more than uh, 11,600 registered chemical which are uh, we are daily using in any of the material or any of the uh, thing you see the chemicals is being used and there are about 20 chemicals per week 52 weeks per year if you see 1,144 chemicals are manufactured every year they are different type of organic chemical there may be pesticides they 
from the major portion of these compounds. You might have heard about the dirty dozen. EPA has banned 12 compounds which are very uh, having very uh, what to say that dangerous or they are toxic in nature but despite that we are using those chemicals in our uh, industries or factories. So if you see chemical hazards the chemical hazards it can cause different type of health hazard or it can cause different type of physical hazard. If we talk about physical hazard, it may be explosive, radio, reactive chemical, fire hazard, water reactive, pyrophoresis, combustible, unstable, oxidizer, flammable and health hazard if you see it can cause as I told it may be corrosive, it may be sensitizer, it may be irritant, it may be carcinogen, it can cause the reproductive hazard, it may be a mutagen and it may be a teratogen also. So these are the pathways or these are the organ, different type of chemical they affect. They affect the chemical central nervous system. Uh, the example, few of the example if you see that tetrachloroethane, mercury, carbon disulfide, the chloroform affect the heart, the kidneys are affected by mercury, methyl bromide, halogenated hydrocarbons or uranium. Liver get affected by tetrachloroethane, vinyl chloride, carbon tetrachloride and lungs get affected by cotton dust, aluminum dust, asbestos fiber, silica. These are only few of the example or few of the toxic chemical which affect our organs. If we see the chemical hazard, there are different type of solid, liquid, gases, vapors, mist, dust and fumes. They affect or our body the route of exposure as we know it may be through inhalation through nose it may be ingestion through mouth it may be absorption through skin whether it is chemical uh, and later chemical travel in our bed uh, bloodstream but, uh, through bloodstream it goes to every part of our body whether it is esophagus whether it is lung whether it is stomach whether it is uh, any of the blood part, any of the body part, it may get, uh, it may travel or it affect the body part. There are different type of toxins, a few of the toxin I have tried to uh, give example like hepatotoxin. Hepatotoxin we know that which affect liver, so chemical which produce liver damage, it cause jointless, it may cause liver enlargement, damage of the liver and the chemical example is carbon tetrachloride and nitrosamines. Then there are nephrotoxin, nephrotoxin which uh, affect the kidney, which can damage kidney. The sign is edema, signs and symptoms is edema and the halogenated hydrocarbon or uranium is called nephrotoxin. Then there are neurotoxin which affects our nervous system. The, this can cause narcosis, behavioral change, decreased motor function and the few of the chemicals which cause neurotoxins are mercury, carbon disulfide and lead. The agents which act on the bloods, they decrease hemoglobin function and deprive the body tissue of oxygen. We know one is carbon monoxide and then there is cyanide, then the symptoms and sign is cyanosis and loss of consciousness. There are number of compounds which damage our lungs. They cause pulmonary tissue damage and the signs are cough, tightness in the chest, loss of breath and the example is asbestos and silica. Then there are reproductive toxin, the toxin which affect our reproductive system. Uh, the, there may be teratogens, there may be mutagens and they include the damage to the chromosomes, they include damage to the fetuses, teratogenesis or uh, mutagenesis and the result is birth defects, sterility, the one of the example is lead. Then there are cutaneous hazard. Cutaneous hazard means that which affect our skin, which affect our dermal layer of the body, the sign in system is defatting of the skin, rashes, irritation, etc. There are number of compounds, number of chemicals like ketone, chlorinated compound. These are called skin diseases, skin irritant or cutaneous hazard. Then there are number of compounds, number of chemicals which cause eye hazard, which affect our visual capacity. 
conjectivitis it causes it causes corneal damage blurred vision burning irritation there are number of solvents number of corrosive number of acid h2so4 hcl or others where uh, we work with or the people are exposed to in different industries it causes eye hazard then there are hazardous waste we you know that uh, the hazardous waste means any um, solid such liquid and gas container other than radioactive and infectious waste because of their chemical activity of toxic explosive corrosive or other characteristic it cause danger or likely will cause danger to the health to the environment whether alone or when coming in the contact with the waste so in simple term the waste which causes uh because of their chemical activity which causes different hazards are known as hazardous waste there are different definition which has been given by different uh, organization uh, these are the the, the um, uh, to give you one uh, uh, definition of environment department of environment malaysia in 1995 they said that toxic and hazardous waste are waste or combination of waste that poses a significant present or potential hazard to human health or living organism and are included in schedule waste so there are 107 categories of schedule waste and these include waste generated mainly from petroleum oil refinery pharmaceutical rubber processing chemical and electronic and semiconductor industry uh, the if we talk about the hazardous waste the criteria is toxicity flammability reactivity and corrosiveness toxicity we know that it or it may cause acute toxicity or it may cause chronically toxic acute toxicity is uh, uh, it affect within hour of exposure or inhalation or a single dermal or oral dose chronical toxicity it contain material that are bio accumulated in the food chain or cause irreversible damage so heavy metal halogenic aromatic compounds like i was talking about this mercury or i was talking about uh, uh, like uh, we know about ddt poisoning and all those these are chronically toxic flammability the uh, the compound the which can easily catch fire they they are uh, they pose both uh, acute as well as uh, latent disposal hazard during handling or disposal so they there are are uh, or if i was talking about latent hazard or flammable waste the latent hazard is potential damage caused by unintentional or spontaneous combustion of flammable residue these flammable waste may be solvent oil pesticide plasticizer complex organic slag they are number of compound b because of their fast reactiveness or they they are very reactive they can cause damage to the life property or the human being so there are number of oxidizer material whether it is chloride perchlorate bromate peroxide nitrates permanganates these all are highly reactive compound and they can uh, react and they can damage the property and life very easily then there are number of compound because of their corrosiveness uh they can they are uh, very uh, potent for causing different type of damages uh, they they are corrosive various type of acids which ph is less than 2 or they are aqueous material of ph uh, more than 12 these all are because of their corrosivity they may cause damage to the life and property because of their uh not proper handling and storage of these compound coming to the relevant legislation in india there are number of act which deals with the types of uh, toxic compounds but uh the when we talk about occupational health the first and foremost act which comes about factory and mine acts under factory act pre employment periodic medical examination and periodic monitoring of work environment is mandatory for hazardous industry and the legal provision for protection of special working group are the plantation labor act 1951 the dock worker safety health and welfare act 1986 
the building and other construction work regulation and condition of service 1996 bd and cigar work conditions and employment 1966 child labor prohibition and regulation act and insecticide act 1968 the factories act if i talk about this is an act to consolidate and amend the law regulating labor in the factory because we are talking about occupational work and it came into force the first day of april 1949 as in factory as 1948 and the legislation for labor welfare it's known as factory act 1948 this act provides for the health safety and welfare and other aspects of occupational health safety for workers in factories then there is mine act the mine act was passed in 1923 and uh, later it was enacted as mine act 1952 and it is for basically the people who are working in different type of mines to provide them different type of uh, protection and for regulation and inspection of the mine then there is national policy on safety health and environment at workplace which is known as npshew national policy on safety health and environment at workplace this npshew it aims to establish a preventive safety and health culture in the country through elimination of incidents of work related injuries diseases fatalities disasters and to enhance the well-being of employee in all the sector of economic activity in the country so uh, uh, with this act several steps are taken for promotion and propagation the objective of safety and health by holding various conferences awareness camps safety weeks campaigns awards and conducting self there these are different goals i'll share all these things with you so basically it um, broader sense it provide a statutory framework for occupational safety and health which respect to all sectors of industrial activity whether it is construction sector whether it is designing of suitable control system of compliance enforcement it provide administrative and technical support it provide the various health incentive safety standard financial incentive and uh, various research and development capability in uh, for risk identification and effective control measure it protects from injuries and diseases it provides safety to health environment and workplace at different sector it promote inclusion of safety health environment and improvement in uh, workplace sectors if you see the broad objective of this policy is the first and foremost is continuous reduction in the incidents and then uh, there are uh, the main objective is the improving safety health environment in the workplace and provide the the kind of environment which is uh, which we can say the green jobs which contribute to the sustainable enterprise development then uh, last i will uh, talk about the vector control this is also one of the topic there are number of diseases which are transported through vector here uh, if you talk about the diseases transmitted by vector it accounts for about 70% of the estimated global burden of communicable diseases the vector control is any method to limit or eradicate the mammal bird insect or other orthopod which transmit disease pathogen the most frequent type of vector control which i will discuss is about mosquito control uh, though we know that sars cov it is also one of the disease which is prevalent today but i will be talking about uh, the mosquito which is a vector of uh, which uh, transmit malaria dengue chikungunya lymphatic filariasis yellow fever zika fever among other diseases so there are different type of uh, uh symptoms or uh, other type of uh, uh diseases which occur because of this mosquito so the national institute of occupational health which is niohh it is established in 1970 at ahmedabad gujarat with the collaboration of who 
and basically the thrust area of the institute are occupational and environmental epidemiology, toxicology, environmental pollution, women's health, agriculture health and human resource development and it worked closely with the Ministry of Labor, Health and Family Welfare, Environment, Forest, uh, Climate Change and Agriculture uh, etc. The NIOH basically it uh, worked for uh, research uh, for environmental stress and factors at the workplace. It has two regional occupational health centers, ROH, which are established in Bangalore and Calcutta, and it provides or it promotes the highest quality of occupational health through fundamental and applied research. There is a National Safety Council of India, which is known as NSCI. The NSCI is the aim is to promote safety consciousness among workers to prevent accidents, minimize danger and risk and arrange related education and awareness program. The main activity which carried out by National Safety Council of India is, uh, is related to road transportation safety, safety of health in construction sector, safety of health in uh, an environment small to medium scale enterprises and other public institute there are central label institute which is associated institute and all india institute of hygiene and public health so basically these are the safety council or national safety council which uh, are public institute which work for the safety of uh, health of uh, safety of health environment of different in India for different sectors. So vector, I was talking about the vector control. So there are different type of uh, as I was talking mosquito is as a vector control. There are anopheles, andes and house flies. So these causes malaria, dengue and yellow fever, diarrheal disease, skin and eye infection, the larva uh, when uh, it is, uh, these are the characteristics of the larva. When we talk about the control measure for mosquito, we know about personal protection, making houses and shelter insect proof, insecticidal spray, environmental modification to prevent breeding. Every time during rainy season, we uh, there are number of precaution government advice for the control of uh, this. Uh, various type of mosquito related uh, whether it is dengue whether it is malaria etc and housefly we know that uh, it because of uh, um, uh, poor sanitation condition so the improvement of environmental sanitation promotion of hygiene practices fly trap we can control uh, and by the control with the insecticide we can control this housefly these are the uh, simply I tried, we all know though, but simply I try to, to tell you about the environmental modification through which we can control uh, the diseases of malaria or um, through vector control. You can see there are the places where the larva breathes. By avoiding all these things, entirely if water is uh, accumulated, this is a place for larva breeding, different type of tents. If we are keeping the water container open, if we are keeping the different kind of waste bins, open waste bins, etc. By modern water storage tank, which is open, rooftop, which is obstructed, roof, but the, the water is accumulated. So all these are unhygienic conditions by making all these things uh, uh, properly uh, clean, we can avoid this kind of vector borne disease. So, there are different type of vector uh, control methods, uh, insecticide application, whether through spraying or dust application of insecticide, then there is breeding site treatment by larviciding, by killing the larva at that place, or personal protection measure that can include the use of repellent, insecticide treated bed nets, cloth treatment, protective clothes, screening of houses, etc. This is just a, a picture which shows the aerial spray, how the insecticides are sprayed aerially to kill the uh, mosquito larvas or, or the vectors. Or then there is a spraying into the water body, so spraying or fogging 
then uh, there is source reduction source management or elimination of the year hiding place health promotion campaign integrated vector management and ADL application these are two of the example by which we can control the vector bond disease so with this i come to the end of my presentation just to brief you about uh, the occupational health and hazard in this section we have just uh, discussed about the occupational health occupational hygiene which are different type of occupational hazards the occupational hazard agent may be physical chemical biological uh, uh, psychosocial etc they can cause various type of diseases the disease may be neurotoxin may be it can be mutagens, it may be uh, cancer causing, it may be teratogens, uh, or they are the compound may be, they may be corrosive, they may be reactor, or so many other kind, kind radioactive. These all are the hazards they are causing. Uh, the, there are number of industrial accidents have occurred during the past, so as part of occupation safety or as part of occupational health hazards management, occupational hygiene. The Indian government has several uh, laws, several policies and several programs to control this occupation. With this, I come to the, uh, uh, the end of my presentation.